Lots of mystery books have humour in them, but I can't think of too many that are laugh-out-loud satires, except Bill Deverell's latest, Snow Job. It features the lawyer-slash-detective Arthur Beecham, who's appeared in a number of Bill's earlier books, and this time out, Beecham leaves his west coast island of Garibaldi and follows his Member of Parliament wife to Ottawa. Who knew Ottawa could be so much fun? He finds himself caught up in a group of scheming, fiendish politicians and bureaucrats and spies, and before long an international incident breaks out. It's quite a romp, and another accomplished mystery, the 15th, if I'm counting correctly, from the West Coast writer and former criminal lawyer. Bill Deverell lives much of the year on Pender Island in B.C., but today he joins me from Victoria. Hello, Bill. Hi, Sheila. Well, I think I'm safe in saying, and and I come from Ottawa, I don't think most Canadians think of Ottawa as a hotbed of humour, but you've you've certainly found the fun. Well, yeah, I actually uh, spent about a month or two in Ottawa researching for this. I ended up there in the coldest, snowiest winter in the history of Ottawa, I think. Uh, and I, I, I had fun. I was up uh, sitting up in the press gallery. I had a special pass and watching the circus below. And, uh, you know, all my suspicions about the world of politics were confirmed. There's a bunch, sort of a, a lot of bull going on down there. But uh, a lot of humor, too, or a lot of opportunities to write about humor. Um, it's not... It, 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 it is a circus, but... Uh, Behind the facade, there's a lot of funny things going on, which I hope I captured. It's almost theater of the absurd, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you know, I've got a little war going on between some minor uh, Central Asian Republic and and Canada over an assassination of a bunch of their uh, cabinet ministers who are fairly antediluvian people. (laughs) Of course, I drag poor Arthur Beecham into the middle of it. I, well, I'm so glad Arthur is back. Um, we we get worried whenever someone goes into even semi-retirement that the character just may not show up again, but he's certainly back in full form. And feeling a little sidelined by Margaret's, his wife's uh, career. Now she's in the she's an MP and she's she's the leader of the Green Party. What what is it like for someone like Arthur who is really used to he enjoys the spotlight himself to be kind of off to the side. Well, yes, he has been shunted aside, and she's getting uh, all the media attention, whereas he used to enjoy the scrums after the big trials uh, and many, many victories. Uh, and uh, suddenly uh, the scrum has deserted uh, him for her, and he's in her shadow as he, he says, I'm starting to feel like the little woman. I want to know what you learned about CSIS when you were researching this book. And what you well, make of that operation? It's not that, that they opened their gates to me. They certainly did not. But uh, like most spy operations, uh, you know, there's this illusory idea that somehow they are perfect, and uh, you know, the, the, the James Bond type thing. They can, they, they don't make mistakes. But uh, our CSIS is is no better than the CIA or MI5 in terms of the the blundering that goes on. There were uh, a lot of people, uh, you've, you've noted this on your blog too, who helped you out with um, an insider's eye view of Ottawa, the global reporter Doug Small, and you got to go into the round room, the Prime Minister's so-called round room. What was that like? Well, I had uh, reporters, press gallery veterans, complaining that I was allowed to go where they had never been permitted to tread, and that is the round room, the cabinet room, and... I'm not sure just why. I, I, I guess because I was writing fiction, I, I was not considered uh, a danger. But uh, <laughs> Senator Carol Nelson, who was uh, Mr. Harper's press secretary at the time, was very kind in arranging uh, for me uh, to uh, explore the inner sanctums of uh, the Harper government. What's it like up close and personal? The one thing I, I, I hadn't realized, uh, and I put this in my book, is that... Uh, You can be fired out of the cabinet if you dare bring a cell phone or its equivalent into into a cabinet meeting. And uh, they have a little locker just outside there where they uh, all are required. And there's a commissioner to make sure they do it. They're almost patted down to make sure they don't bring any any device through which communications could be overheard into the uh, cabinet sessions. 
Were you ever worried that um, the politicians may see themselves r- reflected in your fiction? Well, now my my prime minister, and fictional prime minister, is named Huck Finnerty. He's from New Brunswick, and he's a fat, jolly alcoholic with a great sense of humor. So he'll not be mistaken for Mr. Harper. Can he play the piano? <laughs> I didn't give him an <laughs> instrument, though. How, how did you create Huck Finnerty? Where does he come from? Well, I just wanted a uh, uh, somebody different, somebody kind of uh, likable, but uh, an old-style politician. Uh, he goes on and drinking bats with the boys back home, and uh, I wanted to be able to contrast him with some of the uh, other people in in my uh, pr- uh, conservative cabinet who are a little bit more aggressive and perhaps more right-wing and perhaps, uh, and all of them aiming for the prime minister's job. So I play around with that concept of all the internecine warfare going on within the cabinet. Uh, all the, everyone's ambitious to be Huck Finnerty, uh, Finnerty's successor. The jockeying. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. You've run yourself a few times as an NDP candidate. Um, how did that experience go for you? <laughs> just uh, included this in my blog, but I was a thoroughly inept politician when I was running for the New Denver. I was a young lawyer trying to get a bit of a reputation, but I, I, I had a political background in, in the CCF and the NDP, and I made a couple of extremely disastrous tries for Parliament and managed to prove I was so inept at hustling votes that... Uh, <laughs> I was punished by losing a nomination by one vote for an election, which the NDP actually won, (laughs) without me to drag down the ticket. Do you regret not being... The the, the beautiful irony of all of that is that I would never have written a novel in my life had I succeeded in politics. Instead, I would have been a backstabbing politician or, or veteran of politics and might have written some kind of cynical memoir about frustration and selling out and lost ideals, but nothing more. Politics and uh, and ideals might be a tough combination to manage. What about ideals and the law, Bill? You, you practiced criminal law for many years. Is it possible to combine the two things successfully? No, baby, it's hard. I mean, it's... Uh, I, I tried when I was uh, when I was a young lawyer and uh, a civil liberties lawyer. I'm a founding director of the BC Civil Liberties Association. Um, but you know the money that's out there, uh, even in criminal law, has a corrupting influence. Uh, that's ev- uh, eventually why uh, you know why I kind of soured on the practice of law and was desperately happy when I was able to, when another career was open to me, and, you know, you get these, you, you go for the small-time hoods and, you know, the guys with a bag of marijuana in their pocket, uh, or shoplifter to big-time heroin dealers, and you start wondering, what the heck am I doing here? You know, I'm not happy anymore defending these people. So um, I guess, in, the, in a sense, my idealism drove me out of the law. And Arthur has these moral battles himself in his mind. Yeah, it's, um, of course, you know, it's hard. You're always getting from the public, uh, you know, how can you defend somebody who is guilty, that kind of refrain. And, you know, you come up with, uh, as best you can, the, 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 the trite phrases like, well, he's presumed innocent until guilty. I can't, I'm not a judge. I'm just a lawyer and that sort of thing. But in your heart, you know, this, this man might be a fraud or some sort of despicable person. And I think Arthur has to, is always going through that in his uh, many returns, reluctant returns to the courtroom. Um, but uh, usually the... Um, <laughs> The character that he is defending is, thankfully, and I, I hope the reader readers appreciate that, he's innocent and Arthur is not one who defends the guilty. The opening scene of Snow Job has Arthur Beecham defending an artist against charges of pornography and the statue in question is, and I quote, a 12-foot sculpture of a winged serpent-necked anthropoid with its head halfway up its rear end. 
Uh, ever defended anything like that yourself? Oh, I did a lot of uh, obscenity cases when I was uh, in, in in practice. I uh, I was <laughs> became a kind of specialty. You know, the the right of free expression was uh, very important to me. And I had I know there's some, some pretty minor cases. I had one on Fourth Avenue in Vancouver back in the hippie days of a. Uh, head shop owner who, um, that's not a shop that sells heads, they actually sell par- smoking paraphernalia, <laughs> who uh, was marketing something called the Karma Sutra calendar, <laughs> which had uh, di- different depictions for every month of the year. Uh, ultimately, the magistrate found January through March guilty, acquitted uh, April, May, and June, and found the rest of the months guilty and fined them each $100. <laughs> <laughs> I I love how um this this particular uh, trial provides a lot of amusement for people living on Garibaldi Island. I mean the talk of the unfinished community hall. Living on a Gulf Island myself, I recognize that. I uh, I pulled a lot of uh of my Garibaldi Island from my own island, Pender Island, uh, not as it is currently, but it, as it might have been back in the uh, 70s when I nestled into there or and through the 80s when things were a little bit more laid back than they are now. And uh, I, I, and as I suspect, they, they probably are in your island and, and some of the other uh, less populated islands. But yeah, there's, there's characters uh, in in uh, my uh, Arthur Beecham series who uh, recognize themselves, uh, uh, not always proudly, I have to say. But <laughs> you know, I, I know Sheila, you recognize them yourself from your own experience. I, they seem to be requisite parts of the islands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, and. Uh, yeah, you know, that's uh, that's what adds some color to, um, and uh, you know, uh, uh, people that have written me from uh, the far east, from Newfoundland, from New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island, uh, people who live in those kind of small communities, and mm-hmm. just uh, they recognize the same folks, even in rural Ontario. Uh, these are these are they can identify with my characters, and that that pleases me, Bill. I- you're you're in the the genre of crime fiction, but the, so much of especially the Arthur Beecham books, I think, are comedies of manners. A few years ago, you you said that you were a prisoner of the crime genre. Now, what, what did you mean by that? Well, I, I guess once you're in, you're you're you're, you're never in. allowed out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did write a. a uh, a series of books, uh, Trial of Passion, The Laughing Falcon, Slander, without a single dead body um, in them. But, uh, of course, Trial of Passion won the Arthur Ellis Award for Crime Fiction and the Dashiell Hammett Award in North America for Literary Crime Fiction. And uh, so they don't let you go. They give you awards if you try to escape. <laughs> So that's that. <laughs> but so, but I'm, I, 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 I guess I'm being recognized for for my humor because uh, um, "Kill All the Judges," my last book, got shortlisted for the Stephen Leacock Award, which I was kind of thrilled at, and, uh, and I, I didn't realize it had even been entered. But to to recognize a, a book which is within the crime genre as a as belonging as well to another genre, I, I found that highly satisfying. Well, snow job is great fun, and uh, you know, I, I, having grown up in Ottawa, skated to school on the canal without skate huts detonating. <laughs> mm. It's great fun. Thanks so much. I enjoyed that, Sheila. Bill Deverell is the author of Snow Job, an Arthur Beecham novel.